Well, aloha and good afternoon here on the platform of the Honolulu Star Advertiser. I'm Ryan Kalei Suji, joined by Yanji Denise. We once again are here as we track Hurricane Douglas as it continues its path towards the state of Hawaii and really up the island chain. And uh, Yanji, we once again uh, are going to be joined by Robert Ballard uh, in just a few moments. But really, this is a way for our viewers to engage and ask their questions. Yes, thank you so much for joining us this uh, afternoon. Rather, I see a bunch of people saying, hey, we don't need you. We got windy.com. Well, guess what? We have better than windy.com because we have Robert Ballard from the National Weather Service. He, of course, is the science and operations officer at NWS and at the Central Pacific Hurricane Center. So he has access to all those same models that you may have been looking at at home but he can actually give us context and information. So Bob, thank you so much for joining us today. And if you've got specific questions for him, he's gonna be with us for about the next 20 minutes. So type those in the comments. We're gonna to get to as many as possible. Let's start with where we are right now. What are you seeing? Well, we have a 85 mile per hour hurricane that is not far off the windward side of Oahu. We are watching every radar scan at this point to make sure that this thing just continues on its merry way off toward the west northwest. What we do not want to see at this point is we do not want to see any little westward jog or westward wobble because the damaging winds associated with uh, the hurricane are not far offshore at all. I know folks outside might be wondering, well, wh where is this thing? Now you have to understand the closer you get to the center, the winds go up extremely quickly as you get closer to the center of a hurricane. And so if you're looking at the satellite loop or you're looking at radar, maybe you have a radar app on your phone, you see where that eye is. And as you get closer and closer to the center, you rapidly go from where we're at now with say 20, 30 mile per hour gusts all the way up to wind gusts over a hundred miles per hour. Uh, and that's again, only, uh, you know, 50, 60 miles offshore in terms of when you start getting into the really bad weather. Uh, let's talk about what people are experiencing right now, uh, going through Maui County specifically uh, as they're sort of seeing the effects right now. Uh, what can you tell us in an update from what people are experiencing there and uh, any reports and things that we're learning as it moves past Maui County? So it looks like the center of Douglas is gonna go far enough north that it is going to spare uh, Maui County and the Big Island, a lot of the worst effects uh, that we could have seen. On the south side of the hurricane, the, the direction that Douglas is moving off toward the west-northwest puts us on what we call the weaker side of the storm. So the winds aren't quite as strong on the south side of the system in this case than they are on the west and north side. And so we're in a, especially for Maui County and the Big Island, they're in a little bit of a wind shadow you may, uh, if you're familiar with the weather around here, you know that high pressure to the north of the islands, which is there most of the summertime, brings us that nice cooling trade wind breeze that really keeps us cool and comfortable during the summer. Well, when you have a low pressure area interrupt that, when it comes between us and the high, and the low passing to our north, I know I'm getting a little nerdy here, but that's what keeps, uh, that's what shuts the winds down. So Maui County and the Big Island are now in that zone of light winds uh, to the south of Douglas. And the winds will, for those islands, will come around uh, to the southeast and get really super warm and muggy. Uh, they'll probably increase a little bit, but not to levels that we nearly could have had. Um, there may be some localized problems, say in Hilo or Kona uh, from the south or southeast winds but we're not looking for anything uh, nearly as bad as it could have been. We're still watching on Oahu though, uh, got our fingers crossed and uh, watching those radar scans really carefully at this point. Let's talk about timing. Um, we, we saw from that model that Ryan had just put up or not model, actual radar, uh, that it looked like it was just north of Kahului. Now, what are we expecting? A lot of people are writing, what about Oahu? When are we expecting it? So what can you tell us? Um, it's about three o'clock now. When do we expect the worst of it here? And the other thing I wanted to ask you related is that the mayor had his presser and he said, and, and the governor and he both said that this is probably the closest a hurricane has come to this island in the last decade. Is that true? How close are we talking? Yeah, it definitely is. This is the closest hurricane I've seen on radar in my 20 years here. Um, we've certainly had hurricanes within radar range, uh, but to actually have a hurricane coming this close to Oahu, and this is closer, I'm pretty sure this is closer than Lane 
got as a hurricane. So it just happens that we're on the opposite side, the, the, the somewhat weaker side of the system. But nevertheless, it's still uh, incredibly close and disconcerting. That's why we're watching really close because any sort of a, a westward jog this evening uh, might put parts of Oahu in much worse condition. So we're hoping not to see that. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, definitely this is uh, probably the closest we've seen really destructive winds come to Oahu in the last 20 years. And so the timing wise, when should we expect to see that here on Oahu where we're seeing some of that impact? Yeah, so the question then becomes, do we see that westward jog this evening or not? If we don't, then conditions aren't going to get much worse than they are right now, which really isn't that bad. We have had a couple of wind gauges report gusts uh, up to close to 50 miles per hour, but those are in areas that typically see strong winds, especially in trade winds. Um, so in that case, uh, we're doing okay. If we see a little bit more of a westward jog, the winds could pick up this evening over the next, say, three to six hours, and we could start seeing locally uh, really strong gusts, and then things would settle down overnight. That's the time frame. Now, as to us being able to predict those little wobbles, we're not really able to. That's beyond the state of the science at this point. That's why we had a hurricane warning up and why we keep a hurricane warning up at this point, because trying to forecast those uh, small jogs to the left or right at this point are almost impossible. So we're following radar just as carefully as just about everybody else is at this point. Um, Gene is asking a question that I think a lot of people, and I, I think you just sort of answered it, which is that we don't know, but Gene so, uh, Libio says, what is the statistical probability of a direct hit on Kauai or Oahu? Obviously neither of the, these two islands are in the clear at all just yet. Yeah, I, I don't know if you're asking for a for a numerical value there. Um, sometimes we'll try to predict the, the probability of a cyclone coming within 60 nautical miles, which we know at that point is uh, pretty much uh, you're you're really you're really close to it, and we're we're about at that point now. Um, predicting an exact landfall again is beyond sort of the state of the science. Um, we can watch radar loops from past hurricanes, and we know that over about a six-hour period, they can jog 30 miles to the left or 30 miles to the right, and that is just the way a cyclone moves. A hurricane moves on a zigzag. It doesn't go in a, in a perfectly straight line. And so um, the probability of an absolute direct hit is, is pretty low, but it's not impossible. And certainly this thing is close enough that we really have to uh, make sure that people know that it's out there, which is why the siren sounded today. That's why um, we have a hurricane warning in effect. Same thing for Kauai as Douglas tracks off to the west-northwest. Uh, we're hoping we don't see any little westward jog, but it is possible over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. And so they need to be on high alert too and be rushing their preparations to completion out there on Kauai. You know, let's talk about some of the areas here on Oahu that are like prone to flooding normally in some of these conditions. We know that the Kaka'ako area tends to flood at times. In Mapunapuna, we see that. And sometimes in Waikiki. Uh, what are the areas uh, specifically on the island that uh, might be concerning for you that would be prone to some of this flooding and that people should pay attention to? Yeah, so oftentimes what we'll do in terms of trying to identify the areas of highest risk is we'll look at what the background wind flow is. So if we're getting um, flooding and we have trade winds or we have easterly winds, then we know the windward sides are where the trouble spots tend to be. So Waikane, um, all, all the way up and down the windward sides, but especially Waikane can be a real problem. In this situation though, we don't have a static wind direction. The winds right now on Oahu are still coming from the north as the center of Douglas passes north of, hopefully north of Oahu uh, this evening, then we're gonna see the wind switch around to the west and then the south and then eventually off to the southeast. And so the way that um, wind is gonna turn, we will see areas of focused rainfall possibly change uh, as time goes on. 
What are you most concerned about? Is it, I know we've, we've talked about sort of the triple threat of this, if you will, the wind, the rain, and the storm surge. For Oahu specifically, what's the biggest threat here? Which of those three? Yeah, we're, it's not time yet to let our guard down. In the next, you know, six hours or so, we'll know for sure whether or not we're really going to get the, the direct impacts uh, from Douglas. Uh, in the meantime, a, as long as we're waiting, you really have to pay attention to those the uh, three threats that we've been talking about. One would be uh, damaging winds, including downslope acceleration from the mountains. So we know that the winds, uh, as they're blowing up and over the mountains, they can accelerate as they come down the other side. They often accelerate as they go around the tips of the island. And so those, those areas can see enhanced winds above and beyond uh, just what the background flow is. So any, again, we're looking at winds, we're looking at the possibility of heavy rainfall and the heavy rainfall uh, talking about five to 10, possibly up to 15 inches of rain. Again, as Douglas goes farther and farther north, that looks less and less likely. Uh, but in the meantime, any sort of jog to the left might bring, might realize those sorts of rainfall amounts on Oahu. Um, and then in terms of surf, that's a little more of a given because this system has been out there for a while. Uh, the surf has already been generated. We saw um, earlier today at the buoy, north of Maui, we saw 16 foot seas um, at Pavela. And so that tells you right there that there, the, this hurricane is stirring up a lot of ocean and uh, you've got really high seas, really rough surf coming into the east sides. Um, it's, it's not gonna be pretty North Shore barrels either. It's victory at sea type conditions. And so um, that combined with any sort of storm surge that we might get, which would happen if Douglas took a little turn to the left over the next few hours uh, would be, those are the three things that we really have to consider um, and that folks would need to continue to be ready for as we go into the evening. We hope that we're going to get by this unscathed, but boy, this is really close. I, I can't even begin to describe uh, how close this is right now. You know, recently we saw some of the, we've been seeing more of these high tides. We've heard king tides. Um, yeah. How much does that impact, uh, you know, the storm surge? And if you, in calculating the tides that will be happening later this evening, uh, if it is a high tide, does that pose any more risks? And, and what sort of risks does the, the tide factor into the storm surge? It does. That's a really good point. So we include high tide into our storm surge forecast. So if we're saying two to three feet, that's in, that includes uh, above normal tide levels and, and above normal sea levels. So when you have situations where we have high sea level already, then um, the hurricane can just exacerbate that. And we'll talk about how much storm surge above ground level we expect. So in this case, we've been talking about two to three feet. Now that would generally occur if uh, Douglas were to actually come on into the island or come really, really close to the island would be how we would maximize those values. Um, but in that case, you're also adding uh, the storm surge with wave action, helping to pile that water up on shore. That all gets included into what we're forecasting. So the 15 to 25 foot surf, and then you also have the storm surge um, causing inundation in areas which normally don't see uh, water coming in, just like you talked about. So this is a live picture now from uh, Windy's satellite that, of course, windy.com is a website that we've been looking at a lot because it has uh, so many cool overlays that you can do looking at, um, you know, tides and, and what have you. But yeah. when you look at just how big this system is, I know with hurricanes, a key thing is how fast the storm moves over. We saw, um, we've had, you know, Lane, for instance, uh, in the past just dumped a ton of rain, even though we didn't suffer that direct hit and it was pretty slow moving. Um, what do we think about this storm in terms of how fast it's going across our area? Yeah, so Douglas is moving at a speed which is keeping it going right along, you know, 16, 18 miles per hour. It, it's moving. It's it's not going to get hung up uh, for too long in any one location. That's a good thing. You know, we want to get this thing uh, in and out as quickly as we can, get it out of here. Um, so that helps to uh, minimize the threat from, and I say minimize, but not really minimize. It just lessens the threat from flash flooding and intense rainfall. Nevertheless, we know uh, from past systems like Darby, when Darby came into Oahu as a tropical depression, that uh, produced pretty devastating flash flooding in some areas where we got 
seven to nine inches of rain in just a period of like three to five hours. And so when you get those kind of rain, uh, we're just not designed or set up to drain that uh, very well. And so you can get really hefty flash flooding out of that kind of rainfall. It doesn't take um, 30 or 40 inches of rain to cause real problems here and get folks in trouble. And especially on Oahu with our urban environment, uh, we can't take a lot of really intense rainfall. It doesn't take much to, to start causing big time problems. You know, one of the questions that we also having in, uh, again, from Gene is about wind uh, and factory yeah. and just trying to calculate what kind of damage it would be. Uh, so if we do see, you know, potentially 100 miles per hour winds, as Gene is asking here, what what does that property damage sort of look like? What are some of the things and the factors with uh, as the winds get higher? What What can people expect to see with those high winds? Yeah, so we what we do for that is we we look at how historically um, winds have uh, what we, what strong winds have done on Oahu. So when we start getting gusts of like fifty or sixty miles per hour, we know that we'll see um, some scattered power outages. We will see uh, a few trees down. Um, we'll we will see uh, areas where. Uh, possibly a little bit of structural damage, blown roofs on weaker weaker houses or weaker structures. When you start getting up into the 70 to 90 mile per hour range, which is pretty rare for here, that that's only happened maybe once or twice uh, the whole time I've lived here, then you're talking about pretty widespread power outages. It's not just localized anymore. Um, there's, there's a fair amount of Oahu that's probably without power if we're getting 70 to, to 90 mile per hour gusts and you're getting quite a bit of structural damage. You may have roofs um, on, on the weaker structures. If you don't have hurricane clips, the roof might be completely blown off um, in, in some places. So that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, if, if we start getting winds that strong, you know, you want to make sure that the shelter that you're in is sturdy and can handle that kind of uh, wind damage. And Hard to think about if we get winds, uh, if we get gusts greater than 90 miles per hour. But of course, as you as you ramp up in speed, then the damage just gets uh, worse and worse. That's another reason we tell folks in these type of events to bring in loose outdoor objects because um, other hurricanes, not just here, but in other places, we know that when the winds start getting up to 70 or 90 miles per hour, it'll pick up those loose objects and that can cause additional damage. So we want to try to minimize that as much as possible by, by um, making sure that we have loose objects secured or brought indoors. And that should have already been done at this point. Um, you know, we, we hope folks won't be venturing out into what could be worsening conditions over the next few hours. Again, we're hoping uh, to see Douglas continue off to the west northwest and, and scrape us by by that much. But uh, it's really too close to call right now. Okay, so if we are looking, uh, we, let's go back to that picture, Ryan, because I want to sort of get that, you know, if we could do almost an hour by hour timeline. Now we're looking, it's three o'clock. Um, you said we have about six hours uh, before it, you you believe it'll pass Oahu. Is that in, in six hours from now? So by nine, 10 o'clock, should we be all clear of this thing? I mean, I know it's impossible to say for certain, but yeah. what is our estimation at this point? Yeah, to give folks a good idea, general idea of the timeline. Yeah, I, I, I would say my window of greatest concern or our window of greatest concern is really over the next three to six hours to see what Douglas is going to do and if it's going to make any sort of leftward jog or left turn. Uh, we're not expecting a sharp left turn, but at this point, it wouldn't take a sharp left turn to start bringing worse uh, weather to Oahu, uh, especially as you go farther north up toward like the Kuhuku area, uh, which is going to be closer to the, to, the, to the core of the winds than down here on the South Shore. Um, nevertheless, yeah, as we, you know, once we get past, say, uh, 10 o'clock or so, if, if, if we haven't seen that movement, uh, it looks more and more unlikely. We, we'll keep an eye on it, though. Um, tropical cyclones, the hurricanes like to do things that are unexpected. We do the best job we can to try and forecast the track and intensity and the size. And sometimes they still catch us off guard a little bit. Uh, so with a hurricane pretty much uh, almost literally in our backyard, uh, we're trying to make sure that folks uh, stay safe and that they're aware of what's going on. Uh, just in case things do get worse really quickly this evening. You know, one of the things that you mentioned yesterday when we we're talking about this is uh, you said that as the storm gets closer to the islands, it's it's easier to track or there's other measures because uh, you're able to use different types of tools. 
Uh, can you explain that and how that is uh, affecting the way that you guys are predicting the path forward and what you're learning uh, because of the fact that it's so much closer and you're able to utilize these these tools? Yeah, so what we call that, uh, when, once the system gets really close, we call this now casting. So we're looking at current data. Um, so when you're looking five days out, you're mostly looking at computer models. When you start looking uh, six hours out, you're mostly using things like satellite and radar. And in our case, we have aircraft reconnaissance. The uh, US Air Force Reserve hurricane hunters have been flying around the system doing a crisscross pattern uh, over Douglas today. And that's really helpful to us um, to get that data near time. And so that if we, if we see uh, that it's unexpectedly intensifying or unexpectedly makes a little bit of a left turn all the data that we have coming in now would give us a chance to get the warning out um, to let folks know, hey, this really is coming and you, you know, this is your last chance to prepare. Um, we, we, we do do hurricane warnings, of course, farther out in time because you need that time to get supplies and get ready and uh, make sure that you have batteries and food and water and things like that. But there's also sort of a last minute um, uh, time frame here that as the cyclone is making its closest approach, that we're really watching it to say, okay, is this actually going to strike Oahu or are we gonna get out of this unscathed? Is it gonna go right on by? And of course, we're still watching it for the other islands too, like Kauai, the Garden Isle is still ahead of the path. So um, we gotta make sure that they're well warned and well informed about what's going on as well. I know your time is limited, but let's touch on Kauai yeah. before you go. Uh, if, if Oahu is looking at the next sort of six hours, three to six hours, you said, uh, when can they expect to see the full effects? Yeah, let me, I'm going to bring up the time frame on that just so that we can make sure that uh, we have the latest and greatest here. And it still looks like that if Kauai is going to experience uh, major impacts, that the most likely time that you would see those would be later tonight. So once again, we've been sort of saying the Sunday night time frame, and now we're there as, as Douglas continues off to the west northwest. And once again, the more latitude it gains, the farther north it goes, the better off we are. But it does seem like it may uh, get some sort of westward turn. Now exactly where that happens, uh, we don't know. So it may scrape across the northern portions of Kauai, and if that happens, um, all of the Garden Isle would be at risk for some some destructive weather overnight. All right, and uh, qu real quickly before you leave, again, we know that yeah. we're getting updates all the time. Uh, what are you know what can we expect from the next update, and when that's coming out, and what you predict, and what you're thinking we'll be uh, seeing in this next sort of update that we get from you folks? Yeah, well, it's so close to us now, and of course, with the reconnaissance data and radar, we're we're tracking it hour by hour. So folks can go to our website and they can get an updated position. As long as it's within radar range, we'll do an updated position hourly uh, so that you can keep track of, of where it is at all times and how strong it is. Um, we'll also, if we get wind reports or rainfall reports, we can, we can get that out there. Um, in terms of uh, overnight, I'm sorry, what, what was the last part of the question one more time? Well, just in uh, just the updates and, and what we can expect to see and what you oh, anticipate seeing. Yeah, so that's that's again the critical thing that we'll be watching overnight is whether or not we get a westward turn. So we want folks to keep tuning in to make sure that this thing continues on a west northwest uh, track that's going to take it eventually away from Oahu and hopefully north of Kauai. Um, hard to say exactly what those updates will say. Um, it, it's really going to depend on what the data are showing at that time. Um, but I don't anticipate any really big time major changes to say our track forecast. All of these little changes that we're talking about now are within the cone. Um, so, you know, Oahu and Kauai have been in the cone for a long time. So, you know, we've been telling folks uh, to be prepared for a direct hit. And that's, that's going to remain the case, uh, at least for Oahu for the next few hours and then Kauai overnight. And as you said, we're talking about gradations that are so small, but when you have a storm this size, you know, 10, 20, 30 miles makes a huge difference. Yeah, it really does. I was just measuring uh, from the windward side of Oahu to the edge of the damaging wind is about 40 miles right now. So if you were to stack another Oahu 
uh, next to our Oahu and measure that distance out from, say, Waianae side to the windward side, that's about how far away we are from where the winds really start to ramp up and get uh, and get damaging. It's not that far off. And so that's why we're really concerned. I know folks on Oahu are probably like wondering, you know, where's the hurricane? What's going on? But it is really close to us right now. And we hope it does not get any closer. All right, Robert Ballard, thank you so much for uh, taking time to join us and all that information and really for all the work that you're doing. We know that all of you down there are putting in a lot of hours and we certainly appreciate you bringing this information to all of us. Well, thanks to you guys for helping us get the word out. We really appreciate it. It's important that people uh, you know, know that it's hurricane season and that we have to keep up with these things when they get close to the islands. All right, Absolutely. take care. Yeah. Thank you so much, Robert Ballard, joining us from the National Weather Service and of course the Central Pacific Hurricane Center. Thank you again. Uh, we wanna give you guys all an update as well about shelters. Uh, you know, At last count, we believe there's about 350 people in shelters across the island of Oahu. Um, that, of course, is the map of where the storm is right now. And here we're looking at the emergency shelters. Uh, the shelters with the highest concentration of folks right now, uh, the shelter rather, is the convention center. Uh, about 300 folks there, according to Mayor Kirk Caldwell at his last update. That, of course, is a new shelter and they've uh, utilized it because they can maintain social distancing. If you are planning to go, or physical distancing, if you are planning to go to a shelter, they do ask that you bring your own mask and, if possible, uh, wipes and um, hand sanitizer and any, any of those things because of course we are also battling a pandemic as we face this severe weather. Yeah the mayor also announcing uh, that beaches will continue to be closed. Uh, we know that all the beaches and parks are closed right now and they will continue to be closed going into tomorrow as well as state and city offices will also be closed tomorrow as well. Uh, but we are seeing, you know, I drove by the convention center earlier, Yanji, and there was a line of people waiting to get in. Uh, they are advising people that if you do need to seek shelter, that you head there uh, before things get out of control and before, you know, we could see some of the impacts of this storm. Uh, they want to make sure that if you do need shelter and maybe you're in an area that is prone to some of these flooding and these conditions, uh, to not wait to get there. Do not try to travel during uh, the storm, but get there ahead of time and plan accordingly. Uh, as such. And, and, and you know, right now, Yanji, uh, we're seeing a lot of comments from people who are tuning in and logging on and saying, hey, it, things look good where we are. Uh, you know, we heard from Robert Ballard just moments ago. We're going to take a look now here out at our Kaka'ako cam. And it does look like a beautiful day. Hard to imagine that there is a storm out there right now. Yeah, you can see clear skies. He said, of course, as you get closer, uh, it, it can get uh, a little bit clearer, but um, they are expecting in the next three to six hours the full effects to be hitting us here on Oahu and then later tonight on Kauai. It sounds like the Big Island and Maui County, for the most part, uh, have done pretty well. But of course, that storm is right now just north of Kahului. So we have to wait to see it clear out of that area before we can make a full assessment of what's happening on Maui. But I mean, when he's talking about, you know, 40 miles out is from Oahu is where he sees the damaging winds. That is so close. So we do really need to keep our eye on it. If you do need to get to a shelter, Ryan's right. Get there as soon as you can, because you don't want to wait a couple hours and then and decide and then get yourself in a dangerous situation. Even, you know, even just a little bit of flooding, uh, someone noted in there that they, you know, they felt the f full effects of Darby. That was the storm. I was trying to remember the name of it, but I do remember all of a sudden we had all of this rain and it wasn't something that we had really done a good job of preparing for. Uh, that's right. And and it, now is the time, right? Now is the time to prepare and get ahead of it. If you haven't already done so, of course, it's a little late, but uh, even the Board of Water Supply in encouraging people to just have some backup water, whether that be filling up some uh, containers or filling up your bathtub with water. In case we do lose power, those pumps can last for a few days. Uh, and then that's where things kind of will get tricky. So they're making sure they want everyone to be prepared with water as well. Um, and, and just having that backup supply. Uh, so all these little tips that can be taken in order to help you prepare for the storm. Of course, we encourage you to head on over to the Honolulu Star Advertisers website. There is a complete listing of various services as well as announcement of things that have been closed that will remain closed for tomorrow, uh, as well as regular updates. It, it's a great source uh, to continue to stay connected during this time. Yes, at five o'clock, the next track comes out. The track then comes out again at 11 p.m. But as uh, Robert said, we are going to be getting hourly updates, but you look for that, the five and the 11, um, you know, on the hour, so to speak, or on the 
on the day, <laughs> um, we we look for that because those are our best indicators of what's actually happening with the storm. So in about an hour and a half, we should have a fully updated track. We look forward to that. Thank you so much for those of you who did write in questions. We really appreciate you engaging with us. Uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow at 1030, hopefully pivoting to talk about COVID and some politics and Hopefully the storm is long gone, but of course we roll with whatever the news is. So uh, tune back in here tomorrow morning. We will hope to see you then. Um, and until then, please do say, stay safe. Yeah, and again, continue to stay connected here to the platforms of the Honolulu Star Advertiser. If there are any big developments, we certainly will uh, be able to bring you those updates, but uh, continue to stay safe. And uh, hopefully we all get through this and, and that, we won't see uh, much impact from this storm, but fingers crossed and, uh, We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Aloha. Aloha.